Close your eyes and settle in with your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to be dependable in staying here. You're trying to find a refuge inside, and the refuge is going to be yourself, your own mind. Which means you have to develop good qualities in the mind. Because we're born into this world, we realize that very early on that we have to depend on others. Yet we find that after a while we can't depend on them for everything. A lot of things we have to look, at, look after for ourselves. So we've got to train ourselves. And this is a process that goes on and on and on. Sometimes we like to think we've finally found something outside that we can depend on or something inside we can depend on. It turns out, whoops, no, it's not the case. So we have to keep on looking. If you're looking into the mind, though, you find that there are good potentials. And that's learning how to make the most of these potentials. That's where your refuge is going to lie. So we develop mindfulness by staying with the breath, remembering to stay with the breath. We develop alertness by watching how it's going. Is it comfortable? Does it feel right for the body right now, the way you're breathing? It should feel right. After all, it's the force of life. So if it feels constricted, if it feels tight, or feels you're not getting enough of it, make adjustments. That's the good thing about the breath. It's one of the elements of the body, one of the functions of the body that you can control. And so learn how to make the most of that potential. Learn how to control it well. And you find that as you're doing it, you develop those good qualities in the mind. Qualities of dependability. You can depend on your mindfulness. You can depend on your alertness. You can depend on your desire to do this well. And as you see the results coming more and more, that desire gets stronger and stronger. You're more and more convinced that this is where it's going to be found, your inner refuge. Now, the breath itself is not the refuge. It's a crutch, as the John Fung would say to get you to the mind itself. Because after all, at some point we're going to have to leave this body, leave this breath. And then what do we have? We have the cravings and clingings of the mind. So at the very least, make sure that you develop some good cravings and clingings. It's not the case that craving and clinging are all bad. You can crave the end of suffering. You can cling to a right view. You can cling to the practice. These are good things to crave, good things to cling to. Because when we can no longer stay with the body, this is all we have. As the Buddha said, this is what takes us to the next life, just as wind takes fire to another, from one house to another. So make sure that you train your cravings and train your clingings in the right direction. The ultimate freedom, of course, is when you can let them go. But before you let them go, you want to get good use out of them. And you won't be able to know how to let them go until you really know them well. So pay attention right here. Keep consistently watching right here. Because right here is where all the potentials for good qualities of the mind can be found. It's right here that refuge can be found. But if you want something you can depend on, you have to be dependable in looking for it and practicing for it. And that's how those good qualities have an opportunity to grow. <laughs>